Hello and welcome to the Parker Files, where today we're going to be taking a look at the Hot Toys Ant-Man, MMS 497. This is the third version of Ant-Man and it's from the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp. For the artwork on the packaging, Hot Toys leaned heavily into the suit colors and incorporated some nice hexagon detailing in the background. The figure and movie titles have some reflective printing to them which really catches your eye as you look over the box. There's a nice picture of the figure on the front showing Ant-Man coming into full size. The detailing on the back of the box reveals the hexagon texture more prominently along with the standard information you normally find on the back. For this figure, Hot Toys went with a shoebox style box which I really like. When you remove the top, you see the credits to the cast and crew with some more of the hexagon pattern but with more color added. The color scheme on this box art is a bit random and isn't really on brand for the color branding of the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp. But enough about the packaging, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here we have Ant-Man shrunk down to 1 6 scale size. I've been waiting for this figure for a long time because even though Ant-Man wasn't a favorite comic of mine, Paul Rudd's take on him has made him one of my favorite characters in the MCU and I was really looking for this to be the version of him on my shelf. The first version nailed the head sculpt, well the face sculpt. But the costume, well, it was just a little too old school for me. And the Civil War version, well, it just didn't do it for me at all. So when this was released, I was in and I had high hopes, even for the new head sculpt, as the previous version looked a little too much like Ben Affleck. So again, anticipation was at a high for this figure. And I have to say, first impressions are mixed, at best. And not just because of the head sculpt, which we'll get into. So we'll start off with the negatives and then we'll find our way to end on the positives. First, the overall production level on this figure is a bit of a mixed bag. All over the figure I see things that appear to be shortcuts, which doesn't make sense seeing as how this figure took so long for us to get in hand. The knee pads appear crooked to me, which jumped out right away, and I don't see them staying on well with constant articulation. The boots look great, and I'm thankful for the split boot design, but there isn't a lot of movement because the top flap of the boot is not floating. The other two points of initial cringe are the elbow pads and the length of the arms. The elbow pads have unsightly gaps all the way around them and like the knee pads, I just don't see them staying on well or long. Speaking of long, the arms, specifically the forearms, they look off to me and they remind me a lot of the Daredevil figure. Now on to the positives. This suit pops and I love the materials chosen, the way the colors work with the materials, and the fine detailing. The red has a really nice tint to it and combined with the material choice, it has a shimmer or a sheen to it as the light hits it which really sets it off. The black rubbery material is textured differently and the contrast makes the suit look like a perfect combination of the first suit with a modern twist. The silver pieces finish the look off really well. The belt and arm gauntlets have been cast perfectly and the red translucent touches almost make them look as though they're lit up. The back plate is on par with the other armored style pieces and the helmet is truly what makes this figure come to life. The detail is so good from the mold and the paint app down to all the different materials used. Looking through the red lens and seeing his eyes makes this by far the choice for posing for me. In terms of accessories, Ant-Man doesn't come with a whole lot. First up, let's take a look at the laboratory carry-on. I love the moment in the movie the first time I saw it where Hank Pym shrinks the lab to take it on the road with them. The detail in this accessory is incredible. As you look at the roof and along the sides, you really feel like you're holding a building in your hands. The radars and antennas on the top are rubber and move, so you don't have to worry too much about breaking them. The handle doesn't extend, but it is removable. The second handle is a fully extended telescopic one and the wheels actually move which allow you to have him carrying it along. What's odd with that attention to detail is that they didn't add a hand that could grasp the handle. I sometimes wonder how Hot Toys can be so amazing at some details and then miss other things completely. One hand he does come with is this one where he's about to activate the pim particles to change size. He only comes with a right hand with this motion, but what I really like is the silver covering and how it lines up really well with the arm gauntlets. Another accessory we get is this tiny version of Ant-Man. For those who do a lot of photography, this is a great accessory to have. It's really well done, both the sculpt and the paint application, and I think that there are a lot of creative applications for this. 
Back to one six scale size, here's Ant-Man with another accessory. Here we have one of two size transforming discs. One has a blue center, which makes things big, and this one in his hand has a red center, which makes things shrink. These are fairly plain in paint application, obviously due to size, but they're a nice accessory to have. Ant-Man also comes with only one hand that can be used to hold these. Now speaking of hands, these open hands are huge! Like the long, out of proportion forearms, these fingers are super long. I mean, it looks like Ant-Man could palm a watermelon. In these more dynamic style poses, the engineering in the shoulders really stands out. The shoulder pads are held into place with Velcro and they're removable. This is a nice detail as they allow you to remove the pads, position the arms, and then reapply the shoulder pads for a more natural look. So for accessories, he doesn't come with a whole lot that I would term usable. He does come with a stand, as all figures do, that says Scott Lang on it instead of Ant-Man. And he comes with a little backdrop that I don't have any interest in using. What I would have loved is if we had gotten the Hot Wheels carrying case that held all the cars they used, or maybe a small version of him flying a bug. But that's it for accessories. Now let's talk about the smile that broke the internet. Now before we get there, let's talk about the little helmet accessory. This is to model the retracted helmet and it looks really sharp, especially when combined with the back plate. Now after all the anticipation for the head sculpt that Hot Toys blurred out when this figure was released, and all the amazing head sculpts that have come out over the last few months, it's hard for me to believe Hot Toys could take more than two steps back and release a head sculpt this bad. And I actually find it hard to believe that Paul Rudd himself signed off on this. The memes and jokes in the community around this sculpt were relentless, and many people even cancelled pre-orders as a result. But I have to say, in hand, yeah, it's that bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I see Paul Rudd in this sculpt, from the mouth up, they just missed it with the smile. If they had used the smirk from the first release with this sculpt, I think we'd be having a completely different conversation. But you can't dwell on what could have been, only what we have in hand, and so, I have to give this sculpt a 2 out of 10. Paul Rudd's take on Scott Lang, as I said, is one of my favorites, and even though I won't have Paul's face on my shelf with this release, I'm still glad to have this Ant-Man. The suit is a perfect blend of Hank Pym's OG suit and a modern upgrade. I love the material choices, the colors, the textures, and all the fine details. It's hands down my favorite Ant-Man suit in the MCU. So, after looking at Ant-Man and everything he comes with, I have to smile, and I have to give this figure a 7.5 out of 10. Now that Ant-Man is here, I can't wait to have the Wasp next to him. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you want to stay tuned for more. If so, take a second and hit that subscribe button. There'll be more six scale figures and diorama reviews coming your way. Until then, stay safe and collect because you can.